you're all speechless at this point. deep the snow gets. scenario is you fall through the wood. All-Terrain Trails is proudly associated with Four Wheel Freedom. Your adventure begins here. Hey everyone, welcome back to another All-Terrain Trails episode. I'm currently getting the Tacoma ready for a trip across British Columbia we have coming up in the next two weeks. The trip is actually broken down right now, again. I know, I just can't catch a break with the thing, but I just had it towed into a Land Cruiser specialty shop here, and what I think is going on is the injection pump has gone out, and so it needs a rebuild. So while the cruiser's away, we need to get going on our British Columbia trip, so I'm prepping the taco here today. Right now, I'm getting into a U-joint. <laughs> Joining me on this trip is Mike, a longtime friend of mine that shares the same passion of vehicle-based adventure. He will be traveling in his 2000 Jeep Cherokee Sport that has been lightly modified for long stints of off-grid travel. Mike is a journeyman mechanic by trade, and it always makes me feel just a little better knowing he's on the trip. Together, I'm confident we'll be able to overcome any obstacles in our way. My name is Johannes. I have a background as a paramedic, and when I'm not doing that, I love getting out into the backcountry with a camera and my truck to see if I can come up with an interesting story to tell. I'll be traveling in my 2002 Toyota Tacoma. It's a reliable little truck that normally acts as my daily driver, but lately has been acting as my primary adventure vehicle due to all the drama with the Troopy. Welcome to day one of our trip. We're just filling up at the gas station here. How are we feeling, corner? Good, man. Excited? Ready to spend some money on gas? All right, everyone, we're just in the vehicle. We're coming up to Banff right now. Um, our, our first stop is Radium slash Invermere area. If you guys are familiar with that, it's a pretty cool little area in this, in this valley here. There's lots of uh, trails and camp spots around. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm, I'm a little nervous about this trip because BC has a reputation for kicking my butt and kicking my vehicle's butts too. I have blown wheel bearings, blown transmissions, overheated numerous times on these trails in British Columbia. So I don't have a great track record when it comes to uh, vehicles surviving British Columbia. So that being said, like I said, I'm a little nervous about this trip. We do have some high elevation and when you drive uphill for extended periods of time you really just stress the vehicle out so i did as much as i could to get the tacoma ready so here we are fingers crossed 
Um, my ultimate goal is to make it out to the West Coast. Right, so we are officially in British Columbia now. In classic Canadian fashion, it is snowing. Just barely, we're at the top of this mountain pass here. Yeah, it is June 19th. The summer solstice is right around the corner and we're going through a blizzard. We're just gonna motor into Radium. We're getting close now. It's uh, 11 a.m. Should be rolling into town here at about 11.30. Let's do it, let's go. Entering Radium on Highway 93, you will pass through Sinclair Canyon, a deep, narrow gash cut into the heavy limestone beds through the process of water erosion over thousands of years from the Sinclair Creek. Once in Radium, it's a short drive south into the bigger, more established town of Invermere. This is where we will stop to refuel and resupply any last items before hitting the trails. So we stopped in Invermere for uh, fuel. Mike got some groceries. I got a couple of uh, adult beverages for tonight. Now we're gonna go explore this valley here. There are a ton of lakes around this valley. So we are gonna go check out some of these recreation sites around here, some of these awesome lakes. And uh, and the cool thing is, is that a lot of these lakes are surrounded by trails, forest service roads, and, uh, and kind of like four wheel drive access only. So we'll see if we can get into uh, a little bit of trouble maybe, hopefully not too much. It's not long after airing down that we're faced with our first obstacles. Most of the time, these mud puddles are nothing to worry about, but on occasion, you'll run into one that's deceptively deep. If there's any question, it's not a bad idea to get out of the vehicle and test the depth with a long branch. Soon enough, we find ourselves climbing up and out of the valley and are met with some amazing views of Horse Thief Creek. The trail is all but lost to a mountain bike route, so we opt to turn back in search of a lake to stop for lunch. There's been a significant amount of rain in this valley lately, which has made for a wet morning on the trails. Now it's time to stop in for lunch and break out the fishing rods for a quick cast. Boy, I tell you, it's a good thing we're not relying on them for food because, well, I think we'd be starving by now. So we're just exploring these little chicken tracks, these little, just a two lane, just big enough for a Jeep. Um, dotted lines on the map, see where they go. We're on one right now that should connect to a recreation site here. So uh, just trying to explore that further. British Columbia has many different options when it comes to camping. One of our favorites are recreation sites. These are places generally located in remote areas that are accessible primarily by gravel forestry roads. Rec sites provide only the basics for camping, like a flat spot for vehicles and tents, a fire ring, and occasionally a picnic table and an outhouse. Other facilities are not available. Oftentimes, these sites are situated on a small lake and are surrounded by 4x4 and other off-road trails. Most of the time, recreation sites are free, but occasionally there can be a small fee to maintain the site. I'll leave a link in the description for the map that shows all of BC's recreation sites. On this trip, we're going to see some spectacular ones. We're going to try to snag a couple slabs. It looks deep enough. I don't pretend to know much about fishing, but I do know that persistence pays off and Mike finally catches a baby trout. Maybe at some point he'll catch something big enough to make a fresh meal out of, but I'm not convinced just yet. Baby trout. Oh, 
welcome to day two of our BC adventure. We had a bit of a wet morning and a wet night last night. Uh, right around bedtime, the rain started and it did not stop all night. Which was actually nice to sleep under. The, uh, the pitter patter of the raindrops in the tent it was actually fantastic. I slept very well. But come time to get out of the tent in the morning, ah, that was a different story and that was a little harder to do. Getting packed up in the rain, folding away your roof tent in the rain is um, not fun. I think what the plan is gonna be is to um, bump our way down the service road into Kimberly area, where we are going to then uh, cross over Gray Creek Pass, and then that'll take us out to, uh, I believe, I wanna say Kootenai Lake, and then from there we're gonna hop on a ferry across Kootenai Lake, and then we'll be out by Caslo today. So I think that's what we're going to do due to this uh, this rainy cloud cover situation. We are good to go. Back on the pavement to Kimberly we go. Roger that. Kimberly is a magical little city tucked between the Purcell and the Rocky Mountain ranges. The long mining history in Kimberly dates back to the late 1800s where it was home to the world's largest zinc mine. These days, Kimberly is primarily a tourist destination offering world-class skiing, mountain biking, and fishing. We are rolling through Kimberly here, just finished up some lunch at the shed. Cool little uh, pub bar atmosphere. Had some quesadillas, they were delicious. Now we are making our way over to the trailhead for a Great Creek Pass. So it's gonna bring us up and out of Kimberly and down into uh, the Kootenai Lake area. All right, so we just turned off the highway onto our Great Creek Pass journey. Um, there is this little lake I noticed on the map called, what's it called? St. Mary's Lake. You can, oh, I hear a big truck. Gotta get off, we're just standing in the middle of the road. But uh, you can see the lake like right there. I just, we just stopped on the side of the road to pull over here and uh, check out this bridge and you can see the lake and the river, it's beautiful. It's time to knock some pressure out of the tires for the trail ahead. We're quite uncertain of this trail and what to expect, being this is our first time here and the limited online information we've been able to gather. Pushing into the unknown can be a nerve-wracking experience, but I believe this is one of the best ways to live. Pressures are set for the terrain we expect to encounter and soon enough we find ourselves in the thick of the Canadian wilderness. We don't know much about this trail, but we do know that it is approximately 80 kilometers in length and climbs roughly 5,000 feet of elevation in the last 16 kilometers. Alright guys, just going up and over the steepest part of Grey Creek Pass here. Uh, it's a pretty bumpy road. It's not technical or anything, but it's just, it's not a maintained gravel, comfortable gravel road by any chance. You know, our average speed here has been under 10 kilometers an hour for the past significant amount of time. The, uh, 
it, it's mainly just a, a rocky road, not really a gravel road. And uh, it's been going up and down and up and down. Um, but now we're reaching the part where we're actually making the mountain pass. And uh, and yeah, it's getting a little hairier just because just of the elevation gain, the rocky road and everything. So we're taking it slow. Uh, there's snow above us in the uh, in the peaks above us. There's kind of like this, this cloud cover over top of these peaks here. Um, yeah, so we're hoping not to run into any snow, but uh, so far we're just motoring up and up this pass and we're gonna come down into Kootenai Lake. Can't, can't wait, it is just gorgeous. So we're gonna reach an elevation of 6,800 feet is the, the highest point on this Great Creek Pass. So we're just climbing up and up and up. I don't, I don't know if we're gonna make it. It's, uh, it's getting pretty snowy up here. Um, it's, get, it's getting a little hectic. So like I said, I, I don't know if we're gonna make it. Depending on how deep the snow gets, we're gonna try to make the push, but it, everything's white around us now. We are definitely up here in elevation. At elevations like these, snow can persist well into July. We get lucky this time and only have to battle slippery, slushy snow for the last kilometer on the trail. I think we made it. To where? Uh, the top of this mountain, wherever. It's snowing, man. We're high up. Gray Creek Pass. Yo, we came over a thousand meters of elevation. Yeah, over a thousand meters of elevation. Like, it's blizzarding right now. I, I don't know, I wouldn't say blizzarding, but it is coming it's down. It's blizzarding for like most Australians. We're glad we gave it a go and made the push this time, but in the future, I'd leave Grey Creek Pass for July and August. Coming down the backside reveals grades of up to 14%, some of the steepest grades we'll experience on this trip. Thankfully, the snow subsides as we decline in elevation and we enjoy a scenic, although bumpy, ride to the finish line. If you don't already have it, put Grey Creek on your list of things to see. It's well worth the visit. Grey Creek was awesome. Lots of, lots of different terrain, big elevation gains. Like we're at 659 now, we started, we were at 1700, I think, 1700. So, thousand meters, that's pretty good. Saw snow, a lot of wetness, but that's BC for you. Long, took a lot longer than we thought, so we're kind of running short to catch this ferry, but a couple of bears, yeah. Definitely ran into a bear while I was taking a wee. That was uh, terrifying, that was like, maybe five, 10 minutes ago, so I'm still kind of figuring that one out. But uh, yeah, it was pretty sweet. Seeing a bear, he saw a bear. Everybody's okay and we're off to the, off to the uh, ferry. So. We wake the next morning in an unfamiliar place. We arrived to this camp spot last night well after the sun had set. This made for a surprise this morning trying to figure out just exactly where we had ended up. 
Getting to camp in the dark can be a stressful experience, especially if you are in unfamiliar territory. We always try our best to be off the roads before the sun sets, but on occasion the darkness catches up to us. Thankfully, we ended up in a quiet spot off a forest service road not too far from the highway. Before pushing further west this morning, we decide to explore more of the service road we camped on last night. As we climbed higher and higher into the mountains, views of the Kootenai Lake filled our vision. I always find it interesting just how quickly things can change, because 12 hours ago we had no idea this road even existed, and now we're experiencing some of the best views British Columbia has to offer. are just making our way to camp. It was kind of a chill day. We didn't really push too hard to make miles. We went up to, we just kind of found some elevation on that service road there. And then we dropped back down onto the Kootenai Lake. And from there we, um, we went to the Ainsworth Hot Springs, which was really cool. Didn't get any footage of that. It was a, just a very public area, kind of, it's like a public pool atmosphere, but instead of pool water, you have, um, uh, natural hot spring water. So it was it was a really cool area. If you're ever in the area, check out Ainsworth Hot Springs. Just on our way into camp right now. Pulled over on this service road here. And there's a rainbow back there behind me. Oh my God, it was pouring rain. Just absolutely pouring rain down this road. And all of a sudden we kind of came through this little tree cover area to this beautiful, although still raining, but more sun area. It's It's incredible. I just had to stop and check out that rainbow though. All right, everyone, we made it to this gorgeous camp spot tonight. I think it's gonna be a pretty rad next couple of days in this area. Got some rain coming in, but it seems to be clear for now. Hopefully that kind of holds up and this, this weather stays the way it is because it is absolutely gorgeous. So we're gonna enjoy this camp spot tonight and uh, hopefully get some wheeling in tomorrow. Morning everyone, welcome to day four of our adventure. Uh, woke up next to this beautiful lake here at this recreation site. One of the most spectacular camp spots I've ever seen. I feel like I've been saying a lot that a lot lately, but it's, it's hard to beat this. Anyway, we're gonna make our way up to uh, this trail here. It's actually right behind me. We can actually see the trail that we're gonna be on today from our camp spot. It's just a, a service road with quite a few switchbacks making its way up and over this uh, this mountain range here. So um, some elevation gain today is what is on the menu. Let's get after it. All right, we're just at the first switch back here up this trail pulled over for a second and you can actually see our camp spot where we camped across the lake last night if I just flipped you around. Pretty sweet. What a view. forest here is just so thick around us with these old growth trees, cedar trees, um, fern, ferns. We don't see a lot of ferns in Alberta, hey? We are climbing up here 
Enjoying the foliage, enjoying the climb. <laughs> Mike just tripped. Okay, we're good. pretty well speechless at this point um yeah i there's not much i can say other than just look that way Back up more! Back up more! Keep going! Okay, now turn, passenger! Go, give it a bump! There you go! to the peak of this trail. I'm just speechless. There's just nothing to say.
so we got to the top of that mountain and that was the goal that was our plan that was where we were trying to get to we thought we could get back down if we rode along the ridge for a bit and then connect to another trail go back down the problem is that's the trail and it goes up and then down and then it goes up and turns into just pure snow and you know that plus a hard incline plus no bank whatsoever on the driver's side for who knows how long equals not comfortable we've done what we came here to do safer ways that way we know that way is safe we know that way is fine because we came up that way we don't know what's down there and it could be that it's just that little patch that's bad but we don't want to risk it we're way too far off in the beat like in the boonies so we're just gonna play it safe and go back that way like mike was saying we reached a spot that was impassable here up at this elevation there's still quite a bit of snow uh forced to turn back or be faced with um, an extreme risk that we're just not willing to take today, you know? Um, still got a long way to go in this trip. We got to make it all the way to Vancouver and we're about halfway through BC right now. So I'm just so psyched to have made it up here. We, uh, we accomplished the mission. So let's get back down. Let's drop some altitude and uh, pull off for some lunch. Trails like this are truly epic. From the vast, incredible landscape to the true sense of remote adventure it provides, it is places like this that I'm always longing for. It is places like this where all the planning and effort come together to show you the fruits of your labor. We are so lucky to have places like this to explore in Canada. amazing day that was we just finished getting aired up and everything we are back on pavement um, feels weird but feels good to be back on a nice smooth surface going 80 kilometers an hour it's uh it's nice uh, that trail was wild it wasn't too technical but just the elevation and the sights the views the the air the thin air up there it was um it was something else, one of the craziest trails I've ever done. Um, and those shelf roads got definitely a little narrow for my comfort sometimes um, when you're looking down such a steep drop off and the, uh, the road keeps getting narrower and narrower and narrower, yeah, so. Anyway, now we are going to make our way over to another ferry where we're going to be crossing Arrow Lake. Um, we're going to end up hopefully tonight around Revelstoke after our ferry ride. It's about 5.30 in the afternoon here. We'll see you on the ferry. So we're waiting for the ferry. Figured it's uh, nothing else to do but go for a swim. It's a beautiful day. It's gonna be cold. Woo. Woo. Oh. oh, it's actually really nice. Oh. Once off the ferry, we find ourselves hunting down the nearest forest road to find camp for the evening.
morning, everyone. Not sure how well you'll be able to hear me right now with these falls in the background, but this was just such a surprise last night when we rolled into camp to, uh, to hear these waterfalls. We came out here, explored this area last night. I wanted to come out again this morning, take another look at it. Um, like I said, it was just such a surprise. We had no idea this was here, and it's, uh, it's quite a nice treat to be able to come up here and take a look at these awesome falls. Revelstoke, restocking, repacking, and unloaded the whole truck, reloaded it all back up, kind of reorganized everything because everything just gets so unorganized very quickly, if you know what I mean. Once, uh, once you start moving things around and you're on the trails, things just happen to not go back where they should be. So taking some time to um, reorganize everything was great, uh, a bit of a refresh in town. Now we are making our way into uh, the Shushwap area, which is just one of my favorite, favorite all-time places in BC and just anywhere I've been. I just love the Shushwaps. So we are going to go um, explore around there, probably uh, hop on a service road here, see if we can make our way down to the water. Um, yeah, yeah, love the Shushwaps. So that's where we are going to be this evening. There is an obligatory stop you must make when visiting the Shushwaps, and that is Dutchman Dairy. It's a small farm just outside of town and offers some of the best ice cream I think I've ever had. What's even cooler though is that you can stop in for a visit to the cows that helped make that delicious ice cream. The last stop on our list before heading off to find camp is a place where myths and legends are born. We're at the Russ Bros Yard. It's a place famous for restoring old classic cars that are otherwise doomed for the scrap pile. I have never seen so many classics in one place. This yard became so famous it landed its own show on Netflix for several seasons. The story goes that the owner of this place made an appearance on another Canadian show you may have heard of called Highway Through Hell. Apparently, the producers of that show were so intrigued by Mike Hall and his massive collection of old classic rusty cars that they gave him his own show called Rust Valley Restorers. We stopped in for a chat and were given the green light to snoop around and check out all the cool projects on the go. Seeing this place on TV is one thing, but it takes it to a whole new level seeing it in person. Driving down the service road here to camp by the Shushwap Lake. Um, man, another gorgeous sight. Oh, BC just doesn't stop, I tell ya. I'm gonna put the drone up, we'll see you up there. down this super narrow service road in Shushwap here. Coming down to the water, we may have just found a gem of a camp spot. Holy moly. 
I'm liking what I'm seeing. Join us next time where we make the push further west to the Pacific coast of British Columbia. If you enjoy our videos, please consider supporting us on Patreon. I'll leave a link in the video description. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you in the next episode. If this isn't a good enough reason to own a four-wheel drive vehicle, I don't know what is. We were driving through Princeton and I stopped and check out the Whipsaw Trail.